Lucas Media. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. So, Stefan Mulberry's cousin, Sebastian Telfair, who, I mean, Sebastian played 10 years in the NBA, multiple different teams. He had a documentary back in the day, Through the Fire. And that, in my recollection, I believe that was the first one who actually, somebody actually made it professional in the documentary. You know, he was a New York City high school basketball phenom. I think he might have scored the most points in high school basketball at the time. My uh, people from New York, y'all let me know in the chat. And he had all this hype around him, right? And also, he was with Adidas. And you remember when LeBron got that $90 million deal in 03, which shook sports in general. And it made amateur sports serious. Adidas came back and signed Sebastian Telfair to a multi-million dollar deal. And you could tell that Adidas was trying to market him their version of LeBron. I know they play different positions. But, you know, all the hype was going around. So people was looking for the next LeBron for whatever brand that they were signing with. Now, Sebastian went on uh, Cameron and Mace. Uh... It is what it is show. Shout out to them. Y'all make sure y'all check out their channel. Uh, it's labeled as Come Talk to Me on uh, YouTube. Go check it out, y'all. But he has some he has some some things to say, a lot to get off his chest. They asked him about, you know, is he one of the best in New York City? And he just kept saying it was him. He the best. And they said, you might not even be the best person in your building. And Sebastian kept talking about how he beat Stefan Marbury at 16 years old. Specifically, he said that he hit a shot on him and said, I'll see you in the NBA in two years. When Stefan said, well, I'll be seeing you in four years. And he just went on to talk about his his, uh, his high school career. Now, Cameron said that Mace compared him to a little bit of Lenny Cook. And for y'all who don't know, Lenny Cook was the number one player until he went up against LeBron, and then he never made it to high school, I mean, to college. But Sebastian was like, no, nah, man, I played 10 years in the NBA. I get a pension. And and he went on to talk about Stephon Marbury's cousin. Well, Stephon Marbury and Jay-Z had issues, and Sebastian in high school, he was locked in with Jay-Z. They was always together. Jay was calling them around, flying them places. They was at the Rucker Park together. This is when Jay-Z started aligning himself with the next up-and-coming phenoms in sports. Well, him and Stefan had this beef, and, you know, for my younger audience, do y'all ever, go, go look up, um, excuse me, Miss La La La. Excuse me, Miss Again. There you go. But he... Took a, a few jabs at him. One I can remember off the top of my head is don't confuse me with Marbury out this bitch. Run up on me at the light. You can lose your life. And at the time, I ain't going to front. I'm from the Midwest, so I didn't really know what was going on with New York politics. We didn't get Hot 97 and where I was from. But apparently, Marbury, somebody ran up on me at the light and robbed him. So that caused friction. So Sebastian talked about how he was in the middle and... He was trying to bring them two together, but it, it didn't work, and they ended up getting into it. Jay-Z and uh, Stephon Marbury, and Jay was with Beyonce, and he told, Stephon told Jay-Z, get off my cousin Dick. And after that, Jay kind of stopped being cool with him. And, you know, Sebastian's still talking about his career, and he was talking about all the mistakes he made. And one thing that I did notice is he still has a lot of anger in him. And I get it. You know, a lot. Uh, me growing up from a a town with athletes, you see people that was supposed to make it all the time. Some did make it, but a lot of them didn't. Or if they did, their careers didn't pan out to where it was. And you can still see people still in that, that high school mode. You know, you get on Facebook. And the first thing you say is, man, who was the best player in high school, man? I'm still the best player. 
dude, that was 20 plus years ago. Who cares at this point? You know, and I, I think that's a lot of what Sebastian got. And another thing, shout out to Round Association. Make sure y'all subscribe to his channel. But Sebastian doesn't understand. He, you, you can't really. It's hard to be cool with two people, right? And sp- and one of them's your family, and they both going at it. And Jay Z dissed them publicly. For instance, I got a cousin that played several years in the NBA, uh, Aaron Keon Clark, and. You know, and this my cousin, cousin. You know how some people say, oh, man, you know, a distant cousin. That's my cousin, cousin. And I was one of the biggest Jay-Z fans growing up. But if Jay-Z would have dissed my cousin, I would have had to be on my cousin's side. Like, it, I get his family over anything. And, you know, you see Hov ain't, ain't there for you now. Mace, Mace asked, was, could he call Jay-Z or LeBron? And Sebastian was like, no. Nah. And Mace said, you know, I just want to bring it up because people, people, got your back when you hot but then when stuff fall off you don't really hear from people which is true and nothing he kept talking about was his adidas deal and here's my thing when it comes to that okay you lost the deal but you still made millions but he kept talking about how they man they took me they took they, uh, my money from me they took my money from me i made a mistake yeah but you gotta understand these are brand companies you can't be out here toasting, uh, having them them pistols on you, and you getting caught, and you in a, a state that's not gun friendly. You know, I get it. You made a mistake, but these are billion dollar brands. It's still going on to this day, depending on what state you're in and what you do, where they'll drop you in a minute. Look what Puma did to Mikey Mikey Garcia. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, it didn't. Oh, another thing that that he kept talking about was the confidence. Adidas took my money, and I didn't have my confidence anymore because I was only making millions. And you see LeBron go out there, that's because his family said. Well, my response to that, Sebastian, is, and, you know, no, with the, you know no disrespect at all, but wouldn't that make you want to grind and go harder? If I'm making $2 million a year, I got 14 siblings, and I just see... Rondo and LeBron them get these mega contracts then I'm going to bust my ass to make sure that I can get that kind of revenue you know what I mean if I don't have confidence I'm sure going to fake it till I make it but he just he, like he just kept bringing it up and I'm like man you got to have accountability and on top of that you still make millions and I remember him going to breakfast club a couple years ago and he talked about how China offered him Somewhere around twenty million dollars play several years, and he turned that down to go back to the NBA. And he asked Charlemagne and DJ Envy, "What would you have done?" And DJ Envy and Charlemagne's like, "We would have went and got that bag." You see what Stephon Marbury, your cousin, did? He went over in China and got the millions. And now what? He a legend over there, got a statue. I mean, he's he's worship over there in China. So I mean, you still have opportunity after opportunity. And now Stefan responded to all of this. And I'm going to play the video in here. Check out his response. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me speak and talk about my little cousin. Because I wrote something and I said something. And I understand my little cousin greatly. I understand him. And I feel him. And my little cousin was great growing up. Um, I don't know if you see the picture of my little cousin up under, up under my arm. The thing that was so amazing about Sebastian, one of the best things that I ever seen anybody do in basketball. And this is wild. (laughs) This is super wild. He did it. He was the most amazing person that I ever seen do this. Do you know this little dude was playing basketball with skates on? Like rollerblades. This that's how that's that's how gifted and creative this guy was. Like my little cousin was nasty playing basketball with skates. <laughs> how crazy is that? <laughs> he was playing basketball with skates on, yo. So when you have this type of talent, when you have this 
embodiment to be able to do what he was capable of doing. I can understand why he could feel the way how he feels. And it could be arguably that he could be one of or the best high school basketball players. But to be honest, high school basketball wasn't what I inspired to dominate or to, you know, make into a big thing. That wasn't my my thing because I tell I tell people now, it's one thing making it to the NBA and it's another thing playing in the NBA. So when people are like, oh, you're in the NBA? No, I played in the NBA. I dominated in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? So that's where my mind was and where I was at. As far as college, high school, those things weren't my concern. I wasn't really focused on being the best high school basketball player. That's not a title that I inspired towards having or doing. As far as the culture and shifting the culture, I'll just leave it at this. <laughs> Georgia Tech sent the private plane to pick me up to try to get me to go to their school. I don't know how much I don't know how much Ella it gets than that. If it's if, culturally, if you're changing the culture, I think if you're the first person to ever do that. You know, I think you know that is changing the culture, shifting the culture. You know, through your play. And my cousin, he did that as well through the fire. I mean, I don't have to say much. You pretty much know what that is about. It's, it's self-explanatory. But I think, you know, if people thought that I was going to come on the internet and write or say something about my little cousin, they really don't know how I was raised from Mabel and Donald you know, and how we move and how we get down. Whatever feelings I have towards any person in my family, it would never be amongst you and me speaking about how I feel or what I think. It just wouldn't happen. My mom, first of all, I got to answer to my mother after she finds out, you said what about what? You know what I'm saying? So like, that's not going to move in that and it won't, it won't work. You know, my mom would be so disappointed and I wouldn't want to disappoint her or my little cousin from speaking about what he said and what he felt. If that's how he felt and that's what he's saying, you know, that's how you feel and that's what he's saying. So this is not, in a, this is not addressing, I love my little cousin and that's what he is. He's my little cousin, you know what I'm saying? And I understand his feeling about how he felt um, and I'm sorry if you feel that way. I apologize to him for um, making him feel a certain way. Um, and I'll leave it at that. But at the end of the day, you know what it is. So what you just heard was Stefan Marbury's response to Sebastian. You see, he took the high road and he ain't really had nothing bad to say about his cousin. Oh, one more thing. Let me forget before I forget. Shout out to Stefan, man. He was the first person to really make shoes that was affordable. I know they didn't last long, but he really was trying to do good for the community. And I remember a lot of people was hating on it. And, oh, they're not Nikes, but they were, what, maybe $20 or something like that back in the day? So, man, shout out to that. But, I mean, Sebastian, you had a 10-year career. You really shouldn't have to justify anything and let that Adidas – issue go man i mean it was on you you lost millions but you could also you could have just worked hard and got a mega contract and uh, one more thing before i get off i rem he said that it was 14 people he trying to look out for well even if you're making 100 million dollars a year that's still a lot of people on the payroll man these people are grown or whatever and like you could help them start businesses if they are serious but you that all that shouldn't fall on your plate but i just want to get my two thoughts on it Tell me what y'all think.